Hello everyone, Noisily with you, Noisily's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel, and here we are now with part 13 of this build. This was going to be a couple of parts, wasn't it? This is the Airfix KT Ambulance. This is part 13 now. We hopefully should be getting there soon. Um, we don't have much left in the box, as you can see. We have what's on the bench here and these few little bits and pieces there, I and mean, the clear parts aren't even going to be used. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're nearly there. Um, so just want to finish it up, just talk about doing this uh, this rear entry, this rear bit, and then we can get the roof on. Um, so the inner roof area, I've off camera, I've painted these lights on the side here. I've gone done them silver. Uh, and then I've gone round with a black wash and just gone over and run a black wash, just the inside of the doors, into all the nooks and crannies just to give it a bit of a, you know, just to, to highlight all the, the ribs and everything. So now what I'm going to do... Is come along with a um, that's Eshore text to me to re reinsure my car, and I'm not very happy with them. Um, and the same with all insurance companies. They send you a quote. This last year was 170 pound. This year it's 280 pound. So you phone them up and they, 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 they I don't want to pay that. All right, well, we could do it for 190. Well, if you could do it for 190, why did you try and rip me off for 280? That's that's what annoys me. Anyway, so I've got some odorless thinners on here. This is the odorless mineral spirit. Don't use ordinary terps. And then we can just go over here and remove most of this and spread it around a bit and give it a dirty, grubby, sort of blackened look. Yeah? That's what we're trying to do here. So what we're doing is reactivating the black wash. This is the um, Modeler's World black wash. And you can see if I just go in this direction, it gives you streaking. It works great on aircraft. And all we're trying to do is give this a kind of grubby used look. Now, I didn't want to go brown because I don't want it to look like an old pub with a yellow ceiling where everyone was smoking. Um, I want it to look dirty and grubby, but also just a bit of that phrase again, artistic license to pick up the details to give you something to look at when you look inside so it's not just like looking into a um you know a cream painted blank canvas if you remember we did the pre-shading on here so if you remember we painted white first we painted it black first then we painted white in between the panels and then we sprayed the cream so there you can see we've got that sort of streaky look so what i'm gonna do is let that dry a bit Okay, so you can see we've got a, a dirty, grubby look. We're going to let that dry a bit and then we'll be able to go over it again once it's dried out a bit with a this area here is a bit dark. It's the overspray so that the oils have really soaked in but that's the inside. You're not going to see that part anyway because that's inside the cab. So, um, so there we go. So we do the same on the doors. Just come along and with these we want to keep the, all the streaks going in the same direction because obviously anything streaking would run down, not across. It would all run vertically. Blimey, the sun's come out. It's been horrible this morning. To give you an idea of time, today is the 1st of November 2022. I've just made the video featuring all about October. There we go. So just moving this around, as you can see, it's the wash has gone on and it's dried. But just because it's dried, it doesn't mean it has to be. And that is the beauty of using oils rather than acrylics, is you can reactivate them. You can liven them up and get them going again. OK, and then what I can do there, I can get some of this on a paper towel. And I can wipe this off. Again, keeping it in the keeping the streaks in the right direction vertically. As you can see, I can practically, whoops, throw it across the bench. I can practically remove all of that oil. Just like so. There we go, I can do the same one here if I want to, just go over the cloth. But as you can see, what we're left with is a sort of distempered, dirty, grimy look. And that's what we want. So what I'm going to do now 
is come in with a brown wash just to sort of pick up and give it a, a little bit of a sort of canvasy dirty look rather than this this sort of I don't know metallic kind of look if you like all right so I'll get that done and then I'll come back okay so as you can see there randomly just put some brown on those bits there you can see so we'll move those out of the way and we'll concentrate on this floor so I've got some brown wash here what I'm going to do is put some brown wash into the corners okay just let that sit there it doesn't need to be neat and tidy it could just be brushed in there and then I've got some of this pigment now this is this is from the um, Ammo Mig Airplanes Dust Effects. Okay, this is Airfield Dust, and I'm just using this because I want to get like a dusty look. So I'm going to get a knackered old brush. We've got this thing here. This has absolutely had it. I'm just going to get some of this pigment. Just put it in here. And just put it into the areas where I've got that wash. And you can get the pigment to stick down with the wash. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to sort of brush it in, and what it will do, it will dry out and it will look like dust, mud, whatever that's built up in the corners that hasn't been swept out. And you can maybe see it down down there. And the beauty of using pigments is, as you can see there, we've got this dust built up. Now the problem is it looks a bit lumpy, doesn't it? It looks a little bit lumpy. So what we'll do, we will come along with a clean brush. Here's a clean brush and we'll get some odorless thinners. Just run that in there, just touch it on and what it will do, it will kind of set the, the pigment. You can see now it's getting washed around in there and it's leaving like a dusty muddy stain. And as you can see I'm just dabbing this on, I'm not brushing it, I'm dabbing it on and any pigment that's there will be dissolved in the thinner and it will end up looking like a sort of stained floor. We can do the same at the front, get some more of the pigment. We've got some on the bench here, I can pick some of that up from there. Just dab that in there, in fact I am going to put some more in there. some more in here just in there because remember that the dirt would sort of sit in the corners it wouldn't necessarily sit where people are walking but it would be a lot dirtier in the front than it would be in the back I can assure you and there we go and we will see that when that dries it will give like a light rather than a black brown dust of muddy effect it will be like a very light dust we haven't missed any areas and it kind of gives an effect that you can't really get with any other media that's the beauty of pigments okay I'm going to put some down in there as well Now there are people that say you have to do it this way, you have to use this, you have to use that, you can't use this colour, you can't use that colour. You can do whatever you want, truth be known, because at the end of the day it's your model and you will learn your way. It's like I was saying before, you know, when I was a youngster I had this wooden model ship, I couldn't afford to buy any stains or anything. 
So I used coffee. And I found out that by using different concentrations of coffee, heavily or lightly thinned, I could end up with a different, all the different colour stains that I wanted. And it's the same as this. This is for airfields. You know, it's not for in the back of ambulances. And there we go. We can see now we've got a, a blotchy, dirty look on that floor. I wait till you see when that dries. It, I think it'll look quite impressive. So we're going to leave that now to dry and then I'll come back when it's done. OK, so you can see now what I've done on that door where I had that streaking. I put the lines. And what I've done, you can see here, this is the oil, the brown oil that I put on there. OK, the brown wash. What I'm going to do, I'll use a new one so you know I'm not cheating. I've got a dry cotton bud here, it's the soft type, not the hard type. And I'm just rubbing. You can see at the top there it was a little bit wetter than it is down the bottom, so it rubs out easier. But just keep going in the same direction as, as the vertical. Make sure you get all the way to the bottom. And you can end up with this sort of dirty, streaked look. The camera's probably not picking up very well because it's all whiting out. Now, what I can do, if I want to, I've got a little bit of wash in here. I can just wet the cotton bud. And that will reactivate what's already on there. And then, with my previously dampened paper towel, you can see there again, we have that grubby, dirty look. It's not necessarily dirty like the exterior of a tank or something, but it's it's just weathered and grubby and grimy. We can do the same on this one now with the paper towel. You're better off using old t-shirt material for this sort of thing because as you can see paper towel just breaks up, but you get the idea. And there we go. There's our pair of doors now suitably grimed up and dirty. The floor still isn't dry, so once that's dry, I will come back and let you see how it looks. All right, so we've done the roof now with the brown with the streaking. We've done the doors, so they're good to go and they're ready to use. Um, none of this rear end is glued yet. Remember, I'm doing all the same time when I put the roof on. I will glue it all at the same time. If we glue this in place now and then we find that the gap is too short for the roof to fit in, we're in trouble. If we glue it in place now and then we find that the gap is too long, we can't do anything with it. At the moment we can, you know, pull it back, sand some off the back of here, get the, you know, get to close up. We can do anything because nothing back here is glued. Remember, this is all still free. All that there, all that's glued is that there. And this area here, the, the sides are still not glued in. I, I don't think we glued the sides in anyway. I don't remember gluing them in. Um, but definitely the back is not glued on. So the other thing I've done... Uh, if you remember these boxes, we built these up, they were these parts here. If you remember, we did those in part 12. And I've now masked up, I've sprayed the boxes black, painted the detail on top of the batteries, masked up the batteries, they're ready to be painted green. And then they're going to fit into the underneath the cab there. I'm going to change the build sequence slightly because once you do this, what Airfix want us to do now is fit the, the body and then fit the mud guards. Well... If we do that, we've then got to mask up everything and paint. So what I'm going to do is actually fit the mud guards to the body before we fit the body to the chassis. I've had a look and checked and it's not going to foul on the, we can see in the in the side views here, we can see that those mud guards aren't going to foul on the back of the fuel tanks or anything. That's one thing you want to be careful of, like with some of the, the big Russian scuds and that, you know, the um, you've got the big fenders go on. And you have to be careful because they often go under things. So you need to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're not restricting yourself there. So it's telling us to fit the mud guards there after we fit the body. And also this rear step is telling us to do that after we fit the body as well. And that, of course, is going to be fitted to the chassis, not to the actual body itself. So we could go on and do that now. Um, I will probably fit it straightened out because obviously we're having the doors opened. Um, we've already put these pieces on now, as you see, you can see they're in there. Remember we did that so we could do that joint at the front. Um, we've got to make up that PE part there, we've got to do our mirrors, and then we've got a little few lights and everything, and then we're pretty much done. So I'm kind of tempted um, to put these mud guards in, paint all the bottom and everything green, 
and then we can get it all together with the chassis and then we can paint the whole body as one before we start thinking about putting wheels on and stuff and that saves us having to do you know worry about too much accurate masking or anything so basically that's going to glue onto there um and then obviously it's going to be a lot easier to paint these mud guards and everything from there from there from in there with it not fitted on the chassis so that's the way i'm going to do it um you've seen me change the build sequence quite a bit through this but a lot of you will know that follow me that's what i do quite often i often change the build sequence the other thing i'm going to do is paint these green before they go in because when they go in we won't be able to get paint down in that side and i think it's going to look funny if we see any black coming through also this black mr surfacer has a slight sheen to it and that's something we do not want is on any sheen on here whatsoever it's totally drab dull dark dirty muddy whatever so um this floor still isn't dry you can see i've brushed some of the dust on these stretchers okay so that i can show you and you can see that these are pretty much dry and literally with my finger i can rub over there and impart a dusty dull look to those stretchers we can use a cotton bud if you want to Gives you pretty much the same effect. But you can use your finger. And there we go, we've got the same on here. We've got some dust on that end of that leather, as you can see there. So we can just remove that with a cotton bud so it looks like it's been dusty and then cleaned off. I've done the same on these stretchers down here, so again we can use a cotton bud and just remove the dust from there remember you know if it was in the summer and everything was dusty everything would have got covered in dust so there we go you, know, you probably know yourself if you leave your car parked in a in a dusty area in the middle of the summer where you go off for a walk or something you come back it's covered in dust uh, and that's what we're trying to impart here but on the floor we want a sort of dusty trodden look but um you can see it's starting to dry. We've got that sort of uneven, dusty look on the floor, which is what we're after. So, I'm going to go on and get these painted. And then I think I'll come back and we'll assemble all those mud guards and everything and get all the bottom painted, ready to get it glued onto the chassis. Right, they're painted and the paint is pretty much dry. So what we're going to do is take our 400 grit stick and just lightly rub over the legs to expose the tan plastic underneath and then with a sharp pointed tool come it under here and scrape in and just remove the paint I'm only doing this because it's a very small contact area so what I'm going to do is glue these in place now I notice one of them has got a Jess hair on one side so I'm going to make sure that one goes with its side up against the back so we don't see it there it is so we're going to put that one on this side with these you've got one end has got like a, a bracket on it and the other end is plain we'll leave the masking tape on and we'll take it off after everything is painted and I'm just going to test fit this on because these little legs do get sort of easily bent inwards when you handle it it's just going to give them a little tweak make sure they're they're all vertical just like so there we go that's gone in or has it i don't think it's gone in at the back has it very finicky on its location it's very difficult to know that those legs have gone in I'm just going to bend that one out a bit more it's very difficult to see down in the back if they've actually gone in and I can see that that one there hasn't gone in at the front so what we'll do is just apply some pressure wow 
Wow, this really does not want to go together. I felt that one go in then. I still haven't felt, yeah, it's still up on an angle because that one hasn't gone in there. It's this back one that's messing around, I think. This is very, very awkward, guys. Okay, it feels like both of those back legs have gone in. But it kind of feels like it's almost like the battery box is too long. There we go, that's gone in now. So you can see that it's, when you look at it, in all directions it's horizontal that way it's parallel with the back of the truck and then it's it's vertical there so that's good so now that we've got that in we'll get some extra thin in there just let it capillary into that joint and the same there not worried about glue marks and stuff here because obviously it's going to get painted so I'll do the same on the other side now I won't bore you with that and then I'll come back when that's in there we go. Would you believe it? That side just dropped in. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It's because the camera wasn't looking at it. But um, they're all glued in now, so that's all good. We get that horrible wooden block out of the way. Um, so I'm not really sure what's next. Uh, I'm not sure what goes... Oh, that goes in those slots. It's the supports for the mud guards, isn't it? Now, I want to put these mud guards on now, but I'm a little bit concerned about them sticking out while we're doing the rest. So I think I'll build the rest of the body first. We'll do the roof and everything. So what we can do now is go on and fit the internal roof into the external roof. And as you can see here, what I'm telling you to do is just glue this in. Now, <clears throat> this is where engineering comes in. And this is where manufacturers could do a better job. When we look at the kit, we can see that the front of the roof has this panel. The back is just a plain flange. So the roof is actually going to fit in just like so. OK, so you've got that panel there and the back is just a plain butt and we know that these two boxes go to the rear but if you look we have these there's a circle there and a circle there that fits into a circle there and a circle there so if we know they're at the back end they go together that way but be careful because the way this kit has been engineered you can actually fit it the wrong way around it will fit perfectly what they should have done is put two connectors on one side or put one here you know, two there and one there or something. Just made it so it can't possibly go the wrong way round. So make sure you get it the right way round when you glue it together. And that's going to sit in there like that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use some of my white top thicker glue. You could use your Revell contact or whatever. And I'm just going to put some of that in there. Okay, and I'm putting plenty in there because I want it to run down. What I'll do is after I've glued it together, Get that lined up in there. We can see down in there when it lines up. We'll get it together, give it a squeeze, and put it that way up, and the glue will then run down and make, get that nice and firmly fixed in place. And there we are. And that's good enough because when it goes on, it's going to sit on top of these sides, so it's not going to fall out. As long as the, out, as long as the outer roof is glued on, we're going to be fine. So there we go, so we can leave that. Now if you notice, some of this stuff has got a bit of a sheen to it. And most people would come on now with a matte varnish and get everything dead flat. I'm leaving it with a bit of a sheen, okay? I'm sure it would have been painted with a gloss paint. Um, and it would have had a bit of a sheen to it. Even if it was like a canvas, with them cleaning and everything, it would probably have gained a bit of a sheen. You can see it has a very, very slight sheen to it and I'm going to leave it like that. I've left all the sides the same. I'm not going to dull everything down with matte paint. Now what you'll see now when we look inside, if you can see inside there we now have that lovely tarnished yellowed cream look and it's starting to look great. You can see this, the floor is starting to dry out so we're getting that dusty sort of look on the floor. But we'll look at that in a minute. So we'll just take the roof out, we're going to let that dry and then we're going to get all this, when that floor is done, we can do a bit of final work on the floor. We'll do a bit of work on the front and then we can uh, 
finally get the, the whole body glued together and then we'll get those mud guards on. Okay, a couple of hours later now and we can see this dust is all dried. So if you look in this area in here inside the cab, <clears throat> if I can get the light in there a bit better for you, then you will see why is the light not any good again? There we are. Right. So you can see in there now we have the floor all done. And as you can see it's quite dusty in there. I'll do some photographs. That'll be better for you to see it. But basically you can see it's all dusty. Now what I'm going to do is get a cotton bud. And if you look down in there on the side of the driver's seat you can see it's gone a bit far up. It looks a bit tatty. So I'm just going to get a clean cotton bud. Let's get a new one. I'll show you how easy this stuff is to remove. Look, you just brush it off. But the beauty of it, it still leaves a dusty sort of look behind it. So we can still get that dusty look in there. But now we have, why can I not get the light any better in there? Come on, now you've still got a dusty look in there. But we've got the, um, you know, the, the dust behind it as well sort of thing. And then on the floor, I'm just going to, Rub the cotton bud gently over the area in the middle where the, and you can see it leaves the dust in the corners. Now if you want to seal that in, you could go in with a matte varnish and seal that in. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, and we've also got, you can see in the corner there, the seat, the corner of the driver's seat area, if the camera, the camera will focus, I'll have to do some pictures. But there's basically some mud in there as well, sort of built up in the corner, so that looks quite realistic. And then the same on this side, you can see down on the step there, let me just rub away the middle and it will leave the dirt in the sides. You can just rub away and it will leave the dirt. Just give the end of the cotton bud a squeeze to flatten out a bit so we can get into there. And it will just give us a, a dusty look and you can remove where it's been rubbed off with their feet around the edges where the dust would build up and stay in there. So you can see it looks quite authentic. Um, in the back, we have that dust in the floor there. So all I'm going to do is, with my finger, is just gently rub over that floor. So the dust is removed, and the dirt is removed from where the driver, or the people, the nurses in that stand. Okay, so there we are. Right. And then on this stretchers we can just brush over them as I say. And there we are. All done. And that, that's the beauty of these pigments. They're, they're wonderful things. I know this is a beginner's video but it's showing you how I go about using stuff like this and, and how I do it. It's, it. You don't have to do it. This is not the way you're supposed to do it. But it just... There you go. For those that are wondering, what you're supposed to do is put the pigment in, let it sit there, and then just touch it with a, a drop of fixer, and it will um, it will set it there. You could also use some acrylic thinners or whatever, but um, if you look around at other weather, weathering is not my uh, best subject. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at any of this stuff, to be honest with you, but um, I think building is my forte. But uh, there we go. So, happy with that. I'm going to get rid of that little lump. There's a little lump of something on the side there. So now we're ready to glue the roof on, and um, and that's basically that. We're, we're we're really getting there now. So the interior of the roof is glued on, as you know. So we can remove this tape, get rid of this masking tape that's holding it all together, because we don't want the glue to go capillarying under that tape. Just like so. Get that tape off, and now we've got that back panel there. As you can see, I must I must have glued the sides in. I didn't think I did. I must have done. But the back panel certainly isn't glued on. So, we can fit the roof, just like so. And that will drop down in there. And you can see it fits beautifully inside, around the edges and everything. So what we're going to do is do it in a couple of stages. So what I want to do is get a... I'm going to clamp it. I'm going to clamp it down. the sides here but not clamp the back. So 
So we'll clamp it there. Okay, you could use rubber bands, but we're just going to use clamps. What I'm going to do is clamp it down there, and I'm going to clamp it at the back as well. careful not to clamp on those battery boxes. So what we're doing here is literally clamping the roof down onto the sides. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I don't clamp it and I put glue in there, I run the risk of having glue oozing out. And this is not a weld seam, so we do not want any glue oozing out of here. Now you can see what's happening as I'm clamping the roof down at the back, it's pulling, it's pulling the sides out. So I need some way of bringing them back in and I have got in here this thing which is horrible because it falls apart as soon as you look at it. This is one of these horrible little horrible horrible clamps but it'll do for this. And what I can do with this is slide that over there, pull the sides in and then push that in and it will hold those sides in and stop them from pulling out. Just like so. It doesn't matter if we over clamp it like that. Well, it's a little bit too tight. <laughs> Just hold the sides in, stop them pushing out and get a nice joint. And then what I'm going to do is stick a couple of cocktail sticks in here. I'll stick them in down here, make them wedge in a bit tighter. There we go. Stick one in there and then I'll grab another one out. Yes, the camera's on so it won't come out. Grab another one out. And then stick it in there, just like so. And that will keep the, the back panel away because I don't want to glue the back panel yet. So what we're going to do now is glue the roof down onto the sides. And you can see that it's all nice and parallel and everything's good. So we'll get some extra thin. And we will just put the extra thin in there in the gap. Just like so. And then that will get pillory down. And then across the front, we're going to put some here where we've got this beautiful fit where it fits because we did all the clamping earlier. So again, we could get the glue down into those corners, get it glued nice and solid. And then a drop on there, just touch it and let it run along. And then the same here, we'll just touch it and let it run along. That clamp's come loose already, I think. These things are absolute junk. Okay, so that's that. So that's our roof glued down now. Put the drop across there. There we are. That's our roof glued down. So hopefully that will stay there. And what we'll do is, before the glue is fully set, sort of 10 minutes, we'll take the clamps away and then let the roof find its own position. Because at the moment we're sort of squeezing everything out of shape. So um, that's what we'll do. And then once the roof's dry, then we'll deal with the back panel. So I'll see you when I'm ready to do that. Right, just a few minutes later, and we are now basically with the roof is glued on around the front and everything. I did actually put a couple of dabs of glue on here because I don't remember gluing those sides on. So we'll just make sure we're not going to end up with any cracks or anything. So we've got these cocktail sticks in the back here. They're holding the back panel away so we can put those in place now. So what we need to do now is get this, this all glued on and nice and firm. Now, as you can see, it wants to spring out so if I glue it it's likely to spring out so what we're going to do is fix it in place with a rubber band so I can put a rubber band around here I don't want to go glue around put a rubber band around the windscreen because that would be a bit silly because it could come off and then it's going to want to keep coming off here as well isn't it this is unfortunate so I think what we'll do is get another rubber band right what we will do is get another smallish rubber band and we will put that around there and then we will pass this rubber band through that one put that one around there hold it in place and then put this one around the back and then that will stop that rubber band flicking off 
the front. Okay, so we can put that like that. And that should stop that one. No, it does want to lift, doesn't it? It wants to twist because it's twisted there. I think that will probably stay now. Here we are. Right. So now we've got that rear panel held in place. And I can glue this roof, in, roof down, down here to the sides first. But as you can see, if I put glue in there now, the glue is going to run underneath that rubber band and ruin my finish. So what I'm going to do is put a cotton... Uh, uh, cocktail stick under the side of the rubber band there put another one under there in fact I'll do the back I'm gonna put another one under here okay and that will keep the rubber band away from the glue joint oh. okay that doesn't work it doesn't want to work I can't get the I can't get the rubber band to stay away from that glue joint so what we're gonna to have to do is use the extra thin quick setting I'm just going to put a drop of that in there and then run some down here and hold it in place. What I don't want is glue oozing out, it's going to make a right mess otherwise. So that's going to sit in there like that and that should stay. And I'll do the same on the other side. If you notice I'm holding it together when I glue it. What I don't want to do is pull is let it come away and then there'll be glue oozing out. That's fine if you've got a weld line you're trying to replicate. That's absolutely fine. But when you've got areas like this, where you don't want a weld line, you don't want the glue oozing out. So that should hold that side in place there. So now we're going to have to try and fix this top section. So once again, I'm going to use the quick setting. Hold it. Okay, and keep my finger on there, hold that in place, and then do the same over here, hold it. So that we don't get glue oozing out. And there we go. Bear in mind there's a little lip on here. If you look on the front of the roof, there's a lip. And we've got the same on the back, it's been moulded into that panel. And then with the ordinary extra thin. I am going to run some in there so we get a nice strong joint. And there we go. So that's our back end all glued up nicely. Get these rubber bands off of here because they're doing absolutely nothing. So we can leave that to dry. And then we can start to look at doing some seam work. What I can do here, because we've got a bit of a gap there, I can put a drop of glue in there and that will capillary around and hopefully weld anything together that isn't already welded. Too much glue on there. Just put a drop in there, there we go. And that is our back end complete. You can see down inside there we've got our roof and our sides and our benches and our floor and the stretchers all that all done so uh, happy that that's come out and that's looking really good so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll rush the Mr. Surfacer around there and then we'll remove the Mr. Surfacer so here we are now next day um, excuse my dirty nails I've been out in the garage uh, so gone round Mr. Surfacer as you can see here painted all the Mr. Surfacer into all the joints and then with a cotton bud in Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners, we can go around and remove the excess. So, um, just show you how we do that. I use a hard cotton bud. So, these wooden ones, which were sent to me by Simon, thank you very much, mate, uh, they're harder than these soft paper ones. So, the reason I'm using the harder ones is I don't want to go down into the recess too much. There's like a, like a long there, there's a small gap. I don't want to go down into it. I want it to just be a step. I don't want it to be like a gap. So um, I'm using the hard one. So just dip that in the leveling thinners. Okay, put the lid back on just in case you knock it off. And then all we need to do is, sorry, I didn't dip it in there at all. Start again. Just dip it in the leveling thinners like that. Just like so. Why is it every time I put my camera on, I get a text message? So there we go. That's gone like that. 
down in there and across like that. Right, so there we go. So all we need to do is wet the area and then rub it with the cotton bud and you can see what happens is the excess the excess Mr. Surfacer will come off. We can use the other end then just to wipe away any excess that's left on there. I have seen some people who make videos, they recommend using cellulose thinners. I personally wouldn't do that uh, because cellulose thinners will attack the plastic. Um, you mustn't also use, don't use um, rapid thinners or any tall cleaners or anything because they will also attack the plastic. Um, some people say use alcohol. You can use alcohol, but it's very, very slow. Um, it takes a long, long time to work. So I use Mr. Cut 11 thinners. It just works, you know, to my liking. Um, there is also these days, we have the... I still haven't tried it yet. I must give it a go. We have the Aqueous Mr. Surfacer. So I must give that a go. I'm assuming that you'd be able to do the same thing, but with water. So that would be cool. We'll give that a go on something. But... um. As you can see, I can just rub this cotton bud over here and it's drying out now. But what we're doing is we're ending up with a... We don't want to sand it away because we want to keep that step there. We've got that, that ridge along that roof's edge. We want to keep that. We don't want to sand it away. So we'll keep that. And around here we've got the ridges and everything. One thing I am going to do is where we've got this... This line is coming along here. Um, let me get a pointer. It's coming on here. I think that should be one solid line and we've got a gap there. So what I'm going to do is, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, I'll mask it and put some filler in there. But uh, I'm going to go on and carry on doing this. As you can see, I've gone over the front. I'm going to go all the way around and then uh, we'll see how it looks. So we've got them around now. All the Mr. Servicer is removed. Sorry, the Mr. Servicer. The, um, yeah, Mr. Servicer is removed with the levelling thinners. So you can see now we've got these black lines in there. And what that's done, that's filled the gap. But because we've used the Mr. Surfacer, the lonely thinner, sorry, to remove it, it leaves a seam there. So we want the seam, we don't want it sanded flat. However, if you look at this area here, this line goes along this edge, um, and that would be one beam. I think it's a piece of wood. That would be one beam, but we've got a joint just here. You can see just there, there's a joint where there's a step. So what I'm going to do is fill it. Now, I don't want that step there, so I've got some Tamiya putty. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of filler on the end of this. It looks like the filler is dried out on the end. Once again, unprepared. Yeah, the filler has dried out in the end of the tube. Let's get some of the wet stuff from underneath. You only need a tiny bit. And then just put the filler on there. Now I've put masking tape around the area I'm filling because I want area around where I'm filling to be protected. I don't want to get filler on there. So I could just get a tiny bit of filler and push it into that little gap there. Okay and then we can leave that for an hour or so to dry and then we can sand that flat and we'll end up then with that ridge looking like a continuous strip rather than having a gap in it. So we'll leave that to dry and then we can sand that down. The filler's dry, so now we can sand it down. So I'll take my little worn out skinny stick. Don't use new sanders on fillers and stuff. It blocks them up, it ruins them. Best to use something older. So we just sand that there with the masking tape still in place. And then what I can do is remove the bottom piece because the bottom piece is sitting over that vertical ridge there. And as you can see, when you take the masking tape away, you've ended up with a very, very clean line where the filler is. So we just sand the top now. Get rid of this tape. And there we go, that's that done. So now we've got a continuous line going. I'm just going to use my fingernail just to get in there and What we've done, we've just filled that little tiny gap. So we've got a continuous beam now going across there. So we'll get the tape off of this side. Ah, 
and get that sanded down just like the other side and just along the top just remove that ridge and there we go so that's that done right so all our carb is now done we're ready for paint and everything so what we're going to do is get these um, mud guards down in the bottom underneath so as I say as I said earlier it was two days ago for me but it was a few minutes ago for you uh, I'm going to put these on now so that I don't have to worry about masking and everything so the first parts we want are D51 so they are here Yep, they are D51, so we'll get those off the sprue. Seems a long time since we cut anything off a sprue. So we can get those off of there, just like so. Let's get them out of the way. And then remove those nibs. I see Airfix have done here what Border Model slash Wiener Wings have done on the Lancaster, and they've actually tapered off you can see here you've got a tapered off edge I'd like to give it better for you we've got a tapered off edge on there so that it looks thinner on the edge than it really is and what I often recommend with that what I've done with the border model Lancaster is I'll show you now I'm going to round it off so that it's not so obvious because when you when you look at that that's a mud flap when you look at it it's obvious you've got this sort of chamfered 45 degree edge on there so what I'm going to do in fact it's not as obvious here as the uh, border model one is I'm just going to scrape away to sort of make it into a radius rather than a rather than a straight edge then just sand to get rid of that and then you can see you've got rid of that sort of sharp edge if I compare it to that one you can see the two together we've got rid of that sharp edge and just sort of rounded it off so it's less obvious so I'll get this other one cleaned up just removing the the sprue nibs from the edges and then again with the knife just scrape along there just remove that chamfer just like so there we go and there we are that's that done right so looks like we have a like a recess in there it's like an ejector pin mark or something Maybe it's supposed to be there. Strange. So that, these are going to go in here. So they're going to glue into there. Into those slots. They're a very nice fit. You can see it just sits there on its own. What we need to do is make sure that mud flap is vertical. So we can come along with a rule. Uh, where's my little rule here's a rule here I can put that there and then I can make sure that that mud flap is parallel what I'm going to do first is with my rounded blade I'm going to scrape away the paint from here the same on this side Do the same here because we're going to be doing the front ones in a minute. And then with a sharp point, get down inside those little cutouts and just remove the paint from there. Right. So. that one in there extra thin as you can see this is going to be 
this is going to make this rather flimsy, which is why I left it till after I've done the roof. So I think they can almost sit back against those battery boxes. That's good. Really should have put some paint on these first because it's going to be difficult to get paint down in there, but we'll manage. And I will have to prime these in black first. If I don't, I'll end up with a funny colour variation. Here we go. We get those look on the side. Get those parallel. Make sure they're square looking from behind. Looking like that, make sure they're square, vertically down, and then make sure that when we put when we got them here, I can get that rule parallel to the back edge there. We can see they're square, right? That's good. So that's cool, they're glued on. So they can just sit like that and dry. And what I'll do in the meantime, I'll go and get the other parts off the sprue. Right, so we've got these forward mud flaps off now, I've got them cleaned up and as we can see on there they've got some ejector pin marks on them, I don't know if you can see them there's ejector pin marks on them so I'm going to get a pencil and just go over there so we can see where we're sanding now I could use this sanding stick and just sand them away okay, which is absolutely fine but you will normally end up with a slight witness of them because the sanding stick is not actually, you know, rock hard. So another good way is if you can get them, if you can run to the expense, these files are absolutely brilliant. Get them from there. Don't forget NMB10, you get 10% off. These things are absolutely brilliant. I think I've shown you before in these video series. I've certainly shown them a lot on the channel. But these are basically files that will only remove any raised area they will not they will not remove the surface detail you can actually polish clear parts with them they are absolutely brilliant and they are because they're rock hard they won't leave any witness of the uh, of the ejector pin marks you can see here it's you know it's it's such a fine this is the coarsest one and it removes such a small amount of material they are absolutely brilliant and you'll see there if I can get it in the light you'll see that it's actually polishing the plastic and if I go over where I sanded you will see that there are two raised areas there so um yeah really really good little tools absolutely brilliant really enjoy them so I'm going to go on and get these ejector pin marks removed and then we'll get them fitted to the model. And there's the forward ones fitted. Um, I thought I was recording, I didn't turn the camera on. But uh, basically, yeah, there's the forward ones fitted. So you've got those two parts in there. They've got the legs pointing inwards, as you can see on there. And then you've got the two supports. So they're, they're actually fairly sturdy. So that's all good. That's all done. Um, now looking on to what else we can do. I'm going to get this rear step done. You've got the option to have it folded or straightened. Um, I'm going to have it straightened like this. So we need A16, A27 and A28. So here's 16 on here. So we've got A16. We can get that one off the sprues. Oops, flying around. So this one here we're not going to use. So that's going to go in the... In fact, what we will do is we will remove this sprue. That because we don't need that part there, so that can go in the spares box, that can go back in the box. That's our mirrors, and then we've got this one here is 27 and 28. So, this is the these are the two steps. So, we can remove these from the sprue just like so, and then put that sprue in the bin, and then we can get some cleanup done. Now, I notice we've got some ejector pin marks all over the back of these, we have a seam line on here which we need to get rid of. Um, so we'll sand that out as well. Basically, lots of cleanup to do. So I'll get that done off camera because I don't want to bore you with that. And then I'll come back and we'll assemble it. So they're all cleaned up, all nicely done. The seam lines are gone, ejector pin marks are gone. So we can get this step assembled now as per the instructions. So we've got this main part here. This is actually going to glue to the bottom of the chassis. 
So this part here hinges down and it goes this way round with these hinges pointing outwards. And that's just going to sit on there and it all fits together beautifully. It's a lovely fitting kit this. So that's going to go into there like that. Just push that down in. Make sure that's square so we can get a, a rule or something or a set square. Just put that in there and just make sure it's square on there like that. So that's that square. And then this step on the bottom, if you look closely, you will see that the, the there are three ridges on there and the ridge to the left of the screen is thicker and that one goes inwards according to the instructions. So that one's going to go into there like so. That just sits so there. You can see it's, it's, it fits so beautifully. It really is a pleasure to build this kit. And if you are a beginner and you want to put it together and paint it, you know, it, it's easily, I would say easily doable in a weekend. It's one of those, it's just a lovely, lovely kit that fits together beautifully. So that's our step done. Okay, so that's ready for primer. And then before we prime, what we'll do is we'll glue it to the chassis. So I've cleaned up the paint from the chassis where this is going to fit. And this basically, there's, there's two slots in the back of the chassis and there's two lugs on the actual step itself. So that's just going to go into there and into there, <clears throat> sit on there like that. And then a big drop of extra thin in there, get a nice strong joint because we don't want it to be breaking off. It's probably going to get knocked quite a lot. So get that glued in, let that glue dry. And then what we'll do is we'll get some primer on there and some green paint. Be careful putting the chassis down because it actually sits lower than the axles. So we'll put the chassis that way up before it's dry. And then when we get the body on, you can see here that we will have a situation where the step is going to be open and sitting out looking like that. So you can see it looks bloody lovely. So there we are. So I'll put that that way up, let that dry, and then I'll get some black primer on it. I'll get some black primer on these bits too. And then uh, I'll see you back for part 14. So thank you for watching. And um, we're nearly there. It's in the all we've got now, and there's no more you know, the headlamp lenses, that's it. But that's basically it now. All we've got left to do is in the box. There we go. So I shall see you for part 14. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'd please, if you like this, hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And it looks like we're going to get this finished very, very shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.